Welcome to Striking Options, the show that reveals the options you have to better navigate markets. I'm Jeff Kilburn. We've adjusted our show until we can get back into the studio. I'm joined today by Bob Icino. Welcome, Bob. Thanks for having me again, Jeff. Well, Bob, sensational move in the markets. We continue to see equities attract assets, but I want to cover two topics today. First being the NASDAQ 100, sensational move higher, but also I want to talk about Dr. Copper. Are you okay with those two topics today, pal? Sounds good to me, my man. All right. Well, the NASDAQ 100, we've seen a push to positive on the year, up nearly 6.5%. And this kind of goes back to a couple of weeks ago when it felt a little toppy, when you saw that concentration into those top five names like the Microsoft, the Google, the Amazon, the Apples, and Facebooks. But here we are, up nearly 6.5%, defying all the other indices. What's your takeaway from the NASDAQ 100 and the leadership it's providing? Well, number one, I'd like to say it's a good thing that it's providing leadership. Obviously, the NASDAQ and technology in general is where the economy is headed. It's where capital spending can be placed when the economy reopens. But also, it's where work from home is much more efficient. And there's, there's a tradition of doing that in technology. Well, last question about the NASDAQ 100, as we're only about less than 10% away from that February 19th high, is the economy going to be able to catch up with the NASDAQ 100 or is the NASDAQ 100 just such a forward pricing mechanism that we do see recovering the economy and that's why we're at this price being positive year to date? I think it's the latter. I actually think it's more likely that the NASDAQ pulls back a little bit, but I'm hoping I'm wrong about that. I think the economy will have to catch up to the NASDAQ. Well, I think it makes a lot of sense. You can go to the CME Group website and better understand how to utilize the micro E-mini NASDAQs in the event you wanted to hedge exposure, add additional exposure. The micro E-minis really are a nice tool in the toolbox. But let's shift gears and let's move into Dr. Copper. Is Dr. Copper feeling better, Bob? Well, it is because China obviously is reopening and China is the largest consumer and smelter of copper. And they might actually need fiscal plans to continue to stimulate their economy a little bit as they reopen slowly. And copper would be a beneficiary of that. Well, I think you bring up a great point. And historically speaking, yes, there's definitely a correlation between economic strength and the price of copper out of Asia, specific to China. And if you overlay the map, when we saw China reopen in the wake of COVID-19, you did see Dr. Copper get a little bit of a bid. So as we see the reopening of not just Chinese economy, of the global economy, will you see significant more strength in the price of copper? Well, I think people have to understand you're looking at baselines for a lot of things, unemployment, copper, et cetera, at zero. So as the global economy reopens, there isn't much choice for copper but to rally. But I think we should have an idea that there might be a cap on it, given the percentage of GDP we've lost. Oh, that is a great point. I think it's interesting to use that as a measuring stick because copper in the significant times of distress in the market, historically speaking and typically speaking, has provided some leadership. Well, Bob, I, as always, I want to thank you for coming on. We want to thank you for tuning in to Striking Options. And please tune in every week as we will continue to strike options. 